హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఇండియా మోస్ట్ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ ఈ లెర్నింగ్ ప్లాట్ఫామ్ బై జూస్ ఎగ్జామ్ ప్రెప్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఈవినింగ్ వీ ఆల్ హ్యావ్ గ్యాదర్ టుగెదర్ టు డిస్కస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఇన్ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ ఇన్స్ట్రుమెంటేషన్ స్పెషల్లీ దట్ ఈస్ కెపాసిటివ్ ట్రాన్స్ఫ్యూజర్స్ యాజ్ ఎ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ గ్రేట్ ఛాంపియన్ సిరీస్ యాజ్ యూ ఆల్ నో దాట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద లాస్ట్ వన్ మంత్ we have been constantly teaching several important questions and important topics in champion series we are right now in the subject of industrial instrumentation and we are about to discuss the second lecture or in this particular subject of course that is capacitive transducers so let me quickly explain about myself to the students who are very new to the channel as well as very new to me so all about myself it is mentioned in the slide you can see my name this is phanindra and of course all put together i have an experience of 12 plus years in teaching industry especially guiding the gate students as well as esc students up to now i have guided more than 50000 students all across the country in the specific subjects like control systems measurements and industrial instrumentation of course i am specially known for industrial instrumentation well as i said we are currently discussing about the industrial instrumentation subject as a part of the champion series you all can see the schedule which is planned of course this class is already done long back itself we have done this one resist to transducers where i have explained questions related to rtd thermistor strain gauge and of course potentiometer also in this lecture we are going to discuss the second topic that is capacitor transducer and tomorrow exactly at the same time that is 9 pm we are going to discuss about the flow measurement so please keep the schedule exactly in your mobile or else you keep in the diary so that you can track me always on the youtube moving ahead let me discuss the first question of the capacitor transducer but before that let me introduce the small concept of capacitor transducer in fact the concept that is there behind the capacitor transducer jayanti good evening so what do you mean by capacitor transducer without understanding the concept of capacitor transducer of course it is really not suggestible to go to the questions isn't it so capacitive transducers mainly consist of capacitive sensors so what do you mean by capacitive sensor first of all let me write down clearly so if i take capacitive sensor all put together it is a very very simple device and whenever we apply any physical input whatever may be the physical input you apply here so let me write down here this as a physical input this physical input can be displacement or it may be force or it may be humidity or it may be torque so many many different physical inputs we are going to apply pressure also okay pressure also whenever we apply any physical input the capacitive sensor all the way it converts this into capacitors that means you will going to get the output as change in capacitance once you get the output as change in capacitance then we require the configuration of v stone bridge or ac bridge or sometimes we may be using the oscillator or, <coughs> or sometimes we may be using any kind of signal conditioning circuit even filter also so let me write down here in simple terms like it is signal conditioning circuit so signal conditioning circuits for time being let me write down a uh, circuit simply like ckt and ultimately you will be cutting electrical output clear so let me write down here this as a electrical output most of the times it would be voltage and sometimes you may be required to get the current also and even sometimes we will going to get the variables like frequency and all clear so the idea is very simple here so <laughs> you can see all put together here so this is signal conditioning circuit probably the people who attended my session they are very very clearly knowing about this one so the physical input is converted to change in capacitance who is doing the job capacitive sensor is doing the job and who is converting the change in capacitance into electrical output again we require to use the signal conditioning circuit and that converts the change in capacitance into electrical output of course in the process of making signal conditioning circuit especially for capacitive sensors we may encounter ac bridges or we may encounter lc oscillator or we may encounter simple rc circuit or we may be able to design or we may require to design a new circuits like you know uh, voltage to frequency converter so several different types of signal conditioning circuits are there and in gate examination specially the main focus will be on signal conditioning circuit rather than on the capacitive sensor but before going to understand the signal conditioning part and all i would like to tell you 
those students who are very very interested to know instrumentation very deeply you can obviously listen or you can go through all my lectures in Baiju's exam prep app so you can download the Baiju's exam prep app and go through all the lectures of industrial instrumentation naturally you will enjoy a lot now you must also understand one important thing capacitive sensor if you want to know how the capacitance is changing or reacting to the physical input you must know that the capacitance is equal to epsilon a divided by d here correct so in fact this would be more appropriately written as epsilon naught into epsilon r into a divided by d here correct so look at clearly capacitance which is formed between two parallel plates it is always depends on the permittivity of the medium as dielectric medium of course it is also depends upon the area of overlapping of the plates because if you take two plates like this please all of you try to look at this good evening isha agarwal if you take two plates like this the capacitance not only depends upon the area of overlapping it also depends upon the gap between the two plates and also it depends upon the permittivity of the dielectric medium that is present between the plates hope you understood this one correct so now moving ahead which is very important here to know is suppose look at that we have capacitance as i said now this capacitance is function of how many variables here this capacitance is function of obviously three variables here one is relative permittivity of the medium correct one is relative permittivity of the medium followed by that we require to know what is the area of overlapping also along with that you need to know what is the distance between the plates so naturally the capacitance is a function of these three variables if you change any single variable here then the capacitance will going to change so therefore in gate examination if you refer any question that is from capacitive sensors you will find that one of these variables at least at least one of this variable will change so this is the way how you should start any particular question now i have given i think a decent amount of introduction to this let's get into the first question directly here so all you people can see the statement of the first question here a capacitive transducer is used for the measurement of linear displacement look at that this is the physical variable we are about to measure here that is linear displacement and it is termed as x clear so as shown below the parallel plate has a dimension of 5 cm into 5 cm the space between the plates is filled with a dielectric material of 1 cm thickness which has a dielectric constant of 4 very good the value of the capacitance when x is equal to 2 cm is dash so these kind of questions are so popular not only in gate examination even if you go for any psc examination you will find this kind of questions so let me explain clearly how do we solve this one if you want to solve this first of all you must know how the capacitance is formed here so look at that this might be two terminals here so let us take this is one here and maybe at the bottom of this we are going to have a second terminal here so let me take here the second terminal here right so all the way two terminals i have taken now what else is important here is apart from the terminals what we have taken so the upper plate and the lower plate have we seen here it's mentioned that the plate area of overlapping is 5 centimeter into 5 centimeter what does it mean length is 5 centimeter and width is 5 centimeter very good that's given so length is 5 centimeter of course the width is 5 centimeter length is 5 centimeter and width is 5 centimeter correct but what is the question question is he himself is displacing the dielectric medium between the plates almost by 2 cm clear this is a catch you need to understand this very clearly so what does it mean if you look at clearly out of this 5 cm maybe if we start from 0 cm here as we have applied the displacement x is equal to 2 cm clearly here what can i say maybe the 2 cm not maybe it is definitely the first 2 cm it is air is occupied here between the plates and then you can see the remaining 3 cm here obviously the dielectric medium is occupied clear dielectric medium is occupied remaining 3 cm however the length might be changing 2 cm length occupied by the air and 3 cm length occupied by the dielectric medium but the width is same width is 5 cm now you see from here to here even if it is an air medium or air as a dielectric medium it is still 5 cm only width remains same so therefore intelligently what i can say is the capacitance which is formed 
between the terminal 1 and 2. Those who have the minimum common sense you can understand. It is a combination of two capacitors, right? So now let me take a simple diagram here. So I can call this as a 1 here and I can call this as a 2 here, correct? So between 1 and 2, there are two capacitors. What should I say here? Between 1 and 2, now you can see two capacitors. One capacitor is formed because of the dielectric medium. So let me say that as a CM here and another capacitance is also formed between the same plates. But here the dielectric medium is air here, correct? So this is exactly the catch and that is very much required here. So therefore, C12 can be written now as equal to the capacitance of the dielectric medium plus capacitance of the air, correct? Capa air capacitor, correct? Or air as a dielectric medium. Moving ahead, how can I write this one now again? So C12 could be written as CM. Already I told you anywhere, wherever you go and whatever the place you use or whatever the concepts you take. The capacitance fundamental formula is epsilon naught into epsilon air into area of cross section. What would be the area here? So the area of cross section now 2 centimeter is the length and 5 centimeter is the width. Correct. So let me write down here 2 <laughs> centimeter into 5 centimeter here. Of course, the D will be how much? D is 1 centimeter we can say because it is almost around 1, 10 mm. So, 10 mm means 1 centimeter I can take, correct. This is the whole capacitance of the, uh, yes, of course, this is air molecule. Let me do one small uh, recalculation here. So, it would be better if I write clearly here so that you will not get any confusion here. So, this is air and this is CM because both the capacitors are in parallel. So, I have to add these two capacitors, right? No other option, right? So, Ramesh, good evening. Good evening, LRC Ramesh, good evening. Now, plus, what about CM here? Ramesh, can you tell what is the CM value here? So, the CM value is nothing but the capacitance formed by the dielectric material here. How can I write that one? That is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon m. This is easy to understand and that should be multiplied by, now you see 3 centimeter is the length here and two centi 5 centimeter is the width here. Therefore, I can say this as a 3 centimeter into 5 centimeter here. All put together in the division, we need to make this as 1 centimeter here. Clear? Now, everything is known to you. So, moving ahead, what should I do? C12, epsilon naught, we can take outside, correct? And centimeter and centimeter anyway, it gets cancelled here, right? So, of course, 1 centimeter gets cancelled here. So, epsilon naught, if you take outside, what will be there here? So, epsilon a into 2 into 5, 10 centimeters. So, 10 into 10 power minus 2 meters we can write down. So, centimeter I have converted into meter here and additional to that we have dielectric medium. What is the medium dielectric, uh, dielectric medium uh, permittivity here? 4. It is also given here, right. So, therefore, I am writing here 4 and then here anyway 1 centimeter cancel here 3 into 5 it will be of 15. So, let me write down 15 into 10 to the power of minus 2. Now, moving ahead, if you want to calculate C12, you really must have the patience in gate questions. Especially when you are solving gate questions, each and every minute calculation is so important. Even if you miss simple decimal, instead of getting into IIT, you will go to NIT. Clear? You have to prepare once again for the gate exam, right? So, epsilon naught into epsilon a is 1. So, 1 into 10 power, 10 into 10 power minus 2 here. So, this will be 0 0.1 here. Plus, what about this one? 16 to 10 power minus 2. So, this will be 0 0.6 here. Correct? So, this is very simple calculation, isn't it? So, 16 to 10 power minus 2, that will be 0 0.6. So, all put together, this will be like a 0 0.7 into epsilon naught. And that is, can be written as, or if you go ahead, 0 0.7 into epsilon naught, what would be the value? So, 0 0.7 into 8.85 picofarad. Correct? 8.85 into picofarad. Let me write down or else, you know, into... 10 to the power of minus 12 farad per meter. Of course, if you multiply all put together, you will going to get the capacitors. So, what should I say here? So, 8.85 into 0.7. Can anybody say what is the value here? Any one of you. So, 0 0.7 into, there are many students in the session, but you have to be very active and answer to the questions. Okay, then only I will be able to understand that yes, you are following. So, please respond here. 0 0.7 into 8.85. So, this will be coming somewhere around 6.195. So, let me write down here 6.195 picofarad. It is going to be considered as an answer for this particular question. If you have any doubts, those students who are going to watch after this live, 
you can ping me in the comment box so that I will go and enjoy it. Okay. So that's the final answer for this question. Moving ahead to the next question. Next question is really good question because many students can't even think like this. Okay. So let me present the statement of the question first. Consider the capacitive transducer is governed by the below relationships. Okay. Determine the change in output voltage. Okay. Fine. When the distance of in fact, let us see what is the question properly. Uh, when the distance of the two plates changes from 0.010 mm to 0.015 mm, use the following data. The resistance is 1 mega ohm and area of overlapping is 0.01 meter square. Of course, the capacitance formula is given like 0.225 capital A by D, where A is the area of overlapping of the plates and D is the gap between the plates. This is easy to understand so far. The question is, in fact, this question is homework to you. Okay, let me give this as a homework to you, right? What is the question? I want to put it here is this one. That is the change in the time constant of the RC circuit is dash. So that means even if you have a RC circuit like this, we all know that we will going to apply input voltage here. Let us assume that we are applying the sinusoidal voltage here V naught A. So definitely at steady state here, at steady state, we are going to get the sinusoidal output without any second thought. That could be written as V naught of T. No second down. Definitely we will going to get sinusoidal steady state output. Now the question is what is the time constant or the change in the time constant? Why the time constant is changing? Because we all know that the time constant can be always written as tau is equal to RC. Correct? So you don't require a very very big rocket science here. So it is the time constant value which is equal to R into C. But the question is what is changing here? So if I say tau 1 in the first case that may be written as RC1 because the resistance is not changing. So tau 2 can be written as RC2 here because the resistance is not changing only the capacitance is changing. So therefore how can I say the change in time constant here. So the change in time constant means delta tau which is equal to tau 2 divided by tau 1. Clear? So that means calculate the time constant in the first case as well as second case and then take the difference between these two time constants then you will going to get the change in time constant. Correct? Very easy question. In fact, I, I feel that every uh, one, I mean my students can easily solve this one. right? So moving ahead, time constant 1, I am writing like R1, R into C1. What is the C1 here? So moving ahead, the C1 value could be written as equal to, what is the value here? 0 0.225. Let me write down 0 0.225 into area of cross section is 0. Point, how much it is? 0 0.01 meter square. Okay, very good. Divided by what is the D? The d gap is changing from 0 0.015 1, 0 to 0 0.015 mm. So therefore, I can say here 0 0.010, right? So 0 0.010 into 10 to the power of how much? It is going to be minus 3 here, correct? So therefore, this, this gets cancelled here and when it comes up, then it is going to be 225 <coughs> Farad, correct? So let me write down 225 Farad. It's very easy calculation, isn't it? Now, how do we write the tau 1 here? So the tau 1 value can be written now. So this is very easy. Tau 1 equal to any change here is required. So it is mm here. Of course, it is mm and that is meter square. So everything is perfectly all right here. Now, what is the time constant here? Time constant can be written as now R. R is 1 mega ohm, 1 into 10 power minus 6 here. Sorry, 10 power plus 6 into what about uh, uh, the C1 value? C1 value is going to be 225. Of course, this seems to be very, very big, isn't it? Right? So, there might be something it is missing here. So, I think you may require to take this as, you know, into 10 power minus 6 here otherwise you will be getting really a very huge number which is not possible here okay so that common sense you must always keep with you right so moving ahead because if you don't take 10 power minus 6 what is the disadvantage here 225 into 10 power 6 do you really think that that much of time constant is possible it's not possible right so that is the reason why i understood that there is something mistake here that is the number calculation so what we do is let me take this as multiply this with the 10 power minus 6 I am saying. Clear? So therefore, what should I say ultimately here? So it will going to become now. So very easy to understand. That is, right? This will be equal to all put together how much now? So this is equal to 225 microseconds here. So 225 
into <coughs> because 10 power minus 3 it will come up so it will become 225 and 10 power minus 6 is there so into 10 power minus 6 for it and this is quite possible here quite possible that is because the tau 1 now the time constant can be written as r1 in in fact r into c1 isn't it so what is the value of c1 here c1 every one of you know this one c1 value is known to you that is r into c1 so what is the value of r here so just look at the previous data so that you will going to get r value here so yes all topics your classes are awesome sir your explanations are very good thank you very much ramesh thank you very much so what is the value of r here r value is 1 mega ohm so don't miss it and going ahead so or moving ahead we can say r is 1 mega ohm 1 into 10 power 6 into 225 into 10 power minus 6 here of course this this will be out now so you will be simply having 225 seconds here correct 225 seconds now look at the time constant 2 this is a time constant 1 and time constant 2 can be written as r into c2 this is also very important most of the students they commit the mistake here so please see here what is the value of c2 here c2 could be written as 0 0.225 into a is 0 0.01 once again divided by what is the value we are having for d here 0 0.00 0 0.015 mm don't miss that one correct so yes 0 0.015 mm into 10 to the power of minus 3 into 10 power minus 6 we have taken recently this one correct so what is this value again so let me take up a few minutes here so 1 divided by 1.5 so that will be some value like 2 by 3 into 225 here so it will come like something around 150 into 10 to the power of minus 6 here of course farad this one correct this is going to be faraday now after getting this value how do we get the time constant because our ultimate aim is to get the time constant don't forget the question so the time constant in the second case is r into c2 r is not changing that is 1 into 10 power 6 and again c2 is going to be 150 into 10 power minus 6 right so therefore it will be equal to 150 seconds which is quite possible actually correct 150 seconds is possible i know that it is also very high but it is possible so after getting these two time constants what should i say the change in the time constant delta tau is equal to tau 2 divided minus tau 1 so that means it is going to be 150 seconds minus 225 seconds obviously you will be having minus 75 seconds here correct minus 75 seconds or we can say the time constant is reduced by 75 seconds the time constant is reduced by 75 seconds so here none of the options will not match here the reason is we have not taken 10 power minus 6 into the account of calculation clear so here according to this option option d is the correct answer for this but if we go with the actual style of approach of course this is going to be our final answer minus 75 seconds is the final conclusion or we can say the time constant is reduced by 75 seconds both of these two are very much valid here hope you really enjoyed up to here those students who are actually going to watch this lecture after some time if you have any doubts i sincerely request you please put it in the comment section clear moving ahead to the next question this is really a very good question let me take this question a linear capacitive sensor produces 0.8 mm separation between the plates when the pressure of one newton is applied clear right see, see here if they mention like the sensor produces 0.8 mm what does it mean it means that the change in the displacement or the change in the gap between the plates is 0.8 mm if one newton force is applied clear very good when five newton force is applied it is said like 0.4 mm separation is produced very good right so calculate the capacitance value right so calculate the capacitance value especially like when 24 newton force is applied to the sensor in the figure use d is equal to m and plate width is 1 mm and length is 3 mm epsilon r is 1 of course all these are clearly given so for this question intentionally i have not given the option why i have not given the options because i want to know how many different possible options i will going to get from your side because this question is a little bit tricky question okay people immediately see this question and thinks that okay this is very easy to solve this question but when you are solving this question you will understand the beauty of this one okay so now 
let me move ahead and explain clearly here what was given here so two plates are there d is there correct and we are applying the force here right or wrong force we are applying what they are saying clearly they are mentioning that when one newton force is applied it is giving 0.8 mm displacement but when 5 newton is applied how 0.4 mm separation is possible clear so that means the force versus displacement might be a non-linear quantity clear force versus, uh, force versus displacement might be non-linear quantity or else the best part of this question is you can see like in this way right so look at that <laughs> there might be a, a sensor right force to displacement conversion so let me say here force to displacement conversion here force to displacement conversion here so now let me say that an effective change of force here 1 newton to 5 newton you are applying because the literature is not good here in this to be honest to speaking the literature is not good they were not able to write the statement of the question properly but what we should understand is 1 newton to 5 newton force is the range of the force what we apply and the amount of x what we get here is look at naturally uh, when we apply 1 newton force the amount of the displacement what we get is less correct 0.8 m we are going to get and that will reduce right so <laughs> in fact when we apply 5 newton force then the d will be very close correct so the gap between the plates will be too close correct so therefore i can say therefore i can say here the gap moves from 0.8 mm to look at that 0.8 mm to 0.4 mm here so what does it mean look at the statement of the question clearly even though the english literature is not correctly mentioned here at least you should use your common sense because this question was a previous PSU question and very number of students they have committed a mistake okay that's why i'm saying this force to displacement conversion you see now when i change apply the change in force and change in displacement i do i do agree that it is a non-linear sensor but of course we don't have any mathematical expression we can't do better than this one okay so what is the sensitivity now have you seen when one newton force is there 0.8 mm we are getting here and 5 newton is there it is 0.4 mm here so that means when the force is changed the effect change in force is going to be how much 5 newton minus 1 newton of course it is going to be 4 newtons here correct what is the change in displacement that we are getting here so that is equal to 0.4 mm minus 0.8 mm i can say its value is equal to minus 0.4 mm here clear so that means an effective change of 4 newtons an effective change if you look at this way delta f and delta x right though it is a non-linear function or it may be non-linear function but as the information is given like this we can't do better than this maybe it is a small range of force for that sensor so we can linearize or we can approximate that it is linear so 4 newton force it can actually provide minus 0.4 mm displacement therefore if the force is changed by 1 newton if the force is changed by 1 newton then it has to provide how much uh, uh, displacement should reduce minus 0.1 mm here this is the catch here clear this is the catch that means for every 1 newton force the gap reduces by how much minus point a gap reduces by 0.1 mm now what was the question the question is they are applying 24 newtons here correct so it is clearly saying that whenever we apply a, a force of 1 newton here clear if you apply force of 1 newton here the gap between the plates will reduce by how much minus 0.1 mm and that is what we have to understand even though the english script is not clearly mentioned here clear moving ahead 24 newtons force so when the delta f is 24 newton let me write down when delta f is 24 newton what is the change in displacement that we are expecting here so 24 newtons means the obviously the change in displacement will be minus 2.4 you know centimeter or mm whatever it may be here uh, yes it is going to be mm here right so minus 2.4 mm that means the gap between the plates will going to reduce by 2.4 mm this is excellent right so when f is equal to 24 newtons now it will going to become the gap reduces how much it will reduce here now actual gap is how much can you tell me 
or else can you uh, put the value of capacitance now capacitance is equal to epsilon naught into because they haven't mentioned what is the dielectric medium so i have to take only air here so let me take air here of course area of cross section divided by now what would be the gap here the gap is d minus x clear this is exactly the point many students they miss is this one they don't know how to make this thing and finally they will be trapped okay so the great thing here is epsilon naught 8.85 into 10 power minus 12 and as the dielectric medium or the permittivity of dielectric medium is not mentioned i have to consider or pre-assume that it is going to be air so let me write down this is one here and and multiply to this we have area of cross section what was the area of cross section length is given width is given 3 mm into 1 mm right so let me take 3 mm into 1 mm here so which is equal to 3 mm into 1 mm so it could be written as 10 power minus 6 meter square clear this is also so simple divided by what should i write in d minus x now so d minus x is very crazy here so what is the d here 8 mm what is the x here 2.4 correct so therefore d could be written as 8 mm and x is 2.4 is a reduction into 10 power minus 3 here of course so what would be the value here so c is equal to let me take some time and make it clearly here so 8.85 specially multiplied with the 3 <laughs> you have some value 26.455 and divided by what is this value so it is 5.6 right yes 5.6 if we divide how much you will going to get all put together it will be like 4.71 into 10 power minus 15 that is what you will be getting here clear see 4.71 into 10 power minus uh, 15 farad here clear so let me take the calculation once again for you so 8.85 of course into 3 as i was saying there is some value divided by 5.4 or uh, 5.6 i'm sorry 5.6 and this is coming like 4.74 i'm sorry 4.74 so those students who has the doubt in this particular question of course you are at any time at any time you are requested to ask me the doubt no issue at all but i must sincerely request every one of you this question was asked in one of the psu examination where the english script is not clearly mentioned wantedly i have taken this script but you have to apply your common sense and re-logic it or re-engineer it and then properly you maintain this and never try to argue that the english script is not good <laughs> because it is not advisable to argue right we are engineers so you have to re-engineer the statement of the question and put it in the appropriate words clear so now moving ahead to the next question so the next question seems to be good question so let me read uh, the statement of the question here a differential capacitive sensor is interfaced using an op amp circuit shown in the figure below good the parallel plate approximation can be used for the sensor with the capacitors d is equal to 200 micrometer l is equal to 9.5 4 micrometer as the dimensions of the sensor and <coughs> x is given like 1.6 micrometer as the lateral displacement accordingly means as shown in the figure what would be the gain of the system so i think this statement you can understand only if you look at the figure i guess right so let me show you the figure oh so it is looking very big actually fine so let me take this is minus of course this is plus and here we will going to have v0 and let me take vi here which is considered as rms value of the input rms value of the output first of all without looking at this side let us not look at this side look at only operational amplifier here when you look at only operational amplifier can anybody in the session those so many students are there let me know what is going to be the gain of this device so very simple it is a negative feedback device of course it is an inverting op amp right so the gain could be written as minus zf divided by zi here clear minus zf by zi so minus zf by zi so you can write down this as minus 1 divided by j omega feedback capacitance correct so that is c2 here so divided by in fact you can directly write down this one as the feedback capacitance is z2 here so instead of writing and making so much confusion here it is very advisable to you to use simple basics here like make it as z2 here and keep it as z1 that means we have taken feedback capacitance and we have also taken the input capacitance that's it input impedance right now going ahead we can write down here as 1 divided by j into omega into c simple correct in fact it is going to be c1 here now j omega j omega will be out here 
therefore we will be having gain which is uh, simply equal to minus c1 divided by c2 very easy but of course we require modulus value how i know that modulus value because if you look at all options right so we have actually positive values right don't argue with me sir we have uh, none also i will take nine none here okay okay we'll see that also but uh, what is important is the concept here so if you look at the gain here of course what is the gain value here so gain is equal to minus c1 by c2 this is a concept no one can deny the fact here that means now you require to calculate both c1 and c2 and then take the ratio of c1 and c2 to get the perfect value or the final value so now try to use your common sense here so here of course we have c uh, you know c2 and c1 and these are the two capacitors and there is one plate here this is a movable plate maybe let us say that this might be movable plate here no problem and the capacitance first capacitance is formed between this c2 is formed between this plate and this plate clear so this plate and this plate right so and c1 is formed between this plate and this plate here correct so what is the value of c1 first of all let us try to estimate the value of c1 it's interesting as i said the value of c1 could be written as equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r is not mentioned so dielectric medium is one i have to take so epsilon naught into epsilon r right so let me write down that one up to there into area of cross section divided by so let me say this is a1 for time being area of cross section divided by the gap between the plates right so that means the gap between the plates is nothing but h as they have mentioned that one right so you can see from here and here the gap is going to be how much so can you see here yes the gap is going to be h so this is the gap here and even this is going to be the gap here clear so this is going to be gap now look at that instead of writing d there is nothing wrong even if i write d or h or anything here basically it is a gap between both the plates that's it right and what about c2 here if you are clever enough we can say simply like c2 is equal to epsilon naught r uh, epsilon naught into epsilon r a2 of course divided by h simple very easy now what we require gain is equal to minus c1 by c2 so therefore if you take minus c1 by c2 what you will going to get here so the gain can be written now according to our uh, theme of the story it is c1 by c2 right then when you divide these two quite logically and easily you will be getting this as what's the value a1 minus a1 of course divided by 8 simple but what is a1 a1 is the area of overlapping in the first capacitor what would be the area of overlapping here can you see look at logically they were saying that this part of the overall length and this part of the overall length is overlapped however the width is common here width is common so let me write down width doesn't change here only the length that is overlapping area is l plus here x here and here it is going to be l minus x here that this is going to be l minus x here right so now when we add l plus x and l minus x you will going to get 2l which is nothing but this one clear which is nothing but the overall uh, you know length of this plate and this width is mentioned as a d here so therefore a1 could be written as a overlapping area we require so this is l plus x of course into whatever the width of the plate we have that is d here correct so may i know what is going to be now this value here l plus x specifically what is l plus x value clear and l plus x l is this 9.4 1.6 that is 10 uh, 11 right 9.4 plus 1.6 it is 11 11 micrometer and d is 200 micrometer correct so 11 micrometer and uh, uh, d is 200 so 200 into 10 power minus 6 and 10 power minus 6 that is 10 power minus 2 clear that is a1 what about a2 here a2 if you look at a2 will be something like this this is l minus x and d is going to be this value correct so this is very simple again l minus x into d of course what should i say l minus 6 relax and try to get the value very accurately 9.4 minus 1.6 right so it would be 7.8 i guess right so let me make it clearly 9.4 minus 1.6 of course it is going to be 7.8 right 7.8 we have here 7.8 into 200 because d is same of course it will be minus 10 10 power of 
minus 12 here. Now, this a2 by a1 by a2, straight away you can get the answer. Very easy, straight away we can get. a1 is known to you, a2 is known to you. When we take the division, this 210 power minus 12, 210 power minus 12 will get cancelled. What will be there now? You will be simply having like 11 divided by 7.8 here. Simple, correct? So, therefore, what should I say here? 11 divided by 7.8 here. So, which is obviously equal to 1.41. So, you will be having like minus 1.41 here. Clear? Minus 1.41 is considered as a gain of this overall system or gain of this signal conditioning circuit. So, the questions of capacity sensors can be connected from anywhere to anywhere. So, the idea is as you have seen this, here the area of overlapping is mostly very important and only up to here, up to here, this part is overlapped. This part is overlapped with the C1 plate and the remaining part is overlapped with the C2, uh, I mean C2 plate is overlapped with this and C1 plate is overlapped with this. Correct? So, that is exactly the way how you should uh, start thinking about this kind of questions because nobody will really help you in capacitive sensors. Only the thing is your common sense should trigger it out and it should help you. Clear? So, the final answer for this question is minus 1.41. I hope those students who are with me from the starting they really might enjoy this. Right? So, now this is the question I want to give it as a homework to you. So, please pause the video and look at the statement of the question, read the statement of the question, understand it clearly and try to apply whatever the concepts we have been discussed so far up to now into this particular circuit and once you calculate the value of the capacitance, then use the capacitance here in the bridge circuit to get the required output. So, this question is going to be homework to you. As you all know, I will be very sincerely looking at your comment section the comment session and look at your comments. Those who are very sincere and seriously preparing for a gate examination, take this as a homework question and solve this once after the class. Please mention the, uh, you know, option or answer in the comment session. In case if you miss anything, I will going to answer that. Okay. Hope you really enjoyed with the, uh, you know, in fact, the questions of uh, capacitive sensors. And as I said earlier, we will be meeting tomorrow exactly at 9 PM to discuss the concepts related to what? As I said, the schedule you can see here all the way. We are going to discuss about flow measurement in tomorrow's session. Hope you really enjoyed this session. As I was saying, don't miss the homework questions at the end of this class or whenever you are comfortable, solve the homework question and keep your solution in the comment section. Thank you very much to every one of you.